Hello everyone. So in this lecture, we are going to see how we can access an AWS service from a private EC2 machine over the private link using the interface endpoint. In our last lectures, we have already seen what are endpoints and how many types of endpoints are there and what are the differences between them. And also we have seen how to create gateway endpoint and how to access S3 bucket from our private EC2 machine over the private link using the gateway endpoint. If you want to get the link of these two lectures, you can get it from the video description. So let's see how the architecture of our today's lab is going to look like. For the architecture of today's lab, we are going to use mostly the infrastructure which we have used in our gateway endpoint lab. So here is the architecture of our lab for today. We are going to create one VPC and inside this VPC we will be creating one private subnet and we will be deploying one EC2 machine. After that we will be deploying one public subnet and inside that we will be creating one EC2 machine and we will be using this public EC2 machine as a jump box to log into the private EC2 machine. So up to this much infra we have already deployed and, and we are going to reuse it. After that we are going to de deploy one AWS service that is called simple queue service that means SQS. Once it is deployed, we will assign one IAM hole so that uh, to the private EC2 machine so that we can access the SQS service from our private EC2 machine. And then we will be deploying one interface endpoint which will automatically create one elastic network interface in this private subnet. And also during this creation, we have to attach one security group to it. Then we will be doing SSH from our machine to this public EC2 machine and from there we will log in to the private EC2 machine. And then we will be adding some security rules in the security group which is attached to the interface endpoint so that we can access the simple queue service from our private EC2 machine. So, this is the architecture of our lab, so let's jump into our lab for today. So for the lab, I'm in my AWS console home and if I go to my EC dashboard, you can see I have already two EC2 machines running, one in public subnet and one private subnet. The public EC2 machine we are going to use as a jump box to log in to the private EC2 machine and we are going to access the SQS service from our private EC2 machine using the interface endpoint. I am already logged into my private EC2 machine so if you see the IP is ending with 180 here and if you see here it is also ending with 180. So let's go back to the AWS console and let's deploy the rest of the infrastructure. So first we will be deploying the SQS service. So if I go back to my console home and if I type here SQS, click on the simple queue service, click on create queue. Here I will be keeping default, that means standard type, we will be giving it some name, my queue. And I will be keeping the rest of the things as a default and will hit on create. So this has created my queue. Now we will create the VPC interface endpoint. So for that I will go to my VPC dashboard and from the left hand side menu I will go to the endpoints. Here I will be clicking on the create endpoint. Give it a name. Say my endpoint. Here we are going to access the AWS service so I will be keeping this option as a checked as a default and here I will be 
searching for the space. So I will be selecting service name is equal to this one. And here I will be give, selecting this interface option. Scroll down further and then I, here I will be selecting a VPC. Additional setting. We are go, going to go with this default so that is enable DNS name. And for that so we have to ensure that our VPC has the DNS settings already enabled. So if I go back to my VPC dashboard from here and if I select my VPC and go to the actions and here if I click on edit setting here our DNS settings are already enabled which is required for the enabled DNS name setting for interface endpoint. So we will be keeping it as a default that means checked in and here availability zone we will be choosing US is 2A because our private subnet is in this particular availability zone. Here I will be selecting the private subnet and here as I told you we have to attach one security group. If we are not going to attach any security group it will automatically attach VPC default security group to this particular ENI. So let me select default only and also I will be needing it to modify some security rules at later point of time. So let me open it in a new, in a new tab and policy type I will be giving the full access. We can define the custom policy type in the future lecture and we will be hitting on the create endpoint. So now our endpoint is created. Now if I go to my private EC2 machine, so from here first I will try to ping google.com. So as we don't have any outside connectivity using any NAT gateway, so I won't be able to ping any outside URL. So let's cancel this one. And here I have one command to send a message to our SQS queue. So here I will be needing to replace this particular URL. If I go back to my SQS service and copy this URL and paste it here. And region is US is 2 is fine. So if I copy this particular command and paste it here, it won't work because we don't have any connectivity with this, with the outside world or with this particular AWS service. So let me cancel this. Though I have already created one interface endpoint, but still we are not able to access our SQS queue. So as I told you, we have to allow it from the security group which is attached to this particular endpoint ENI. So if I go back to my security group in a new tab which I opened. So here I will be going to in the inbound rules and here click on edit. Here I will be adding one rule for the city based trans traffic and it should be from my VPC side image. So if I go here and go to my VPCs and this is my side image. So let me copy it from here and put it here and click on save. Now I believe things should be good. But no, what it says, because we have no identity based policy which allows the send message action to this queue. Because as discussed in the architecture, we have not attached any particular IAM hole to our EC2 machine. So let me go back to my EC2 dashboard and here I am in my EC2 dashboard, my private EC2 and if I 
click on actions under security i will click on modify iml here i will be creating a new one click on create entity type will be aws service we are going to use it for the ec2 so select ec2 click on next and here I will be searching for SQS. Here I will be selecting the first one Amazon SQS full access. But in the production or in the real world scenario, avoid this full access policy. So click on next. Let me give it a some name. And let's hit on create rule. So this is done. Now if I go back and click on refresh, I can see this one. So let's select this one. Let's up and click on update. Now if I try to access, I can send this message to our SQS queue. And Again, if I try to ping google.com, I won't be able to because this is not allowed. So now let's verify that from the AWS portal that this particular message has been received from the, by the SQS queue or not. So let's go back to the SQS queue. So if I go back to my SQS queue and here, click on send and receive messages. Here scroll down. Here I can see one message is available. So here I will be clicking on poll for messages. So here I can see one message. We'll click on this. So you can see this is a message sent by virtual instructor for interface endpoint demo. So this looks good. So this marks the end of the, this chapter and in the next chapters, we'll be discussing further about the endpoint scenarios as well as the private links. So please keep watching this space. And I hope you liked this lecture and learned something from it. So please do provide your feedback and thank you for watching and have a nice day. Thank you.